Hi, Rob, KC6TYD here. You know, like many hams, I've always wanted to get a go box for my radio equipment. So I've been looking online here. Let me show you what ideas I came up with. While searching online, I came up with numerous sites that uh, showed a lot of interesting ideas, some very simple and more complex. This one here was easy, just mounting radios onto a board. The uh, Pelican box is always an all-time favorite for us amateurs, and I came across a lot of great ideas on the uh, Pelican box. Another popular box was the Ammo box, or specifically the Spud 7. Saw a lot of interesting creations on this little guy. Here's another uh, setup, uh, more of a rack system. It's called iPortables, and a uh, very interesting uh, site, something more along what I'm looking for. I then came by this uh, website posted by WI5J. As you can see, this particular Go Box works on a 19 inch rack system. It's able to hold multiple radios and other uh, equipment. The case itself is called a Gator case. I think I'm going to go this route. I found this company online, Sweetwater Music Instrument and Pro Audio, that was selling the Gator Box or the Gator case. The one I purchased was the 6U for only $149.99. Okay, the Gator Box is in. Let me show you some great features about it. To start off with, here's the nice handles. There's one on this side and one on the other. Makes it very easy to carry. You'll also notice that on the end, there are four foot, uh, foot rests that allow it to uh, stay steady in this position. And there's also four foot rests on the back side of it, which makes it very steady on the table. The lid has little detents, so if you get more than one box, it stacks as well. All right, there's two lids on the box, one on the front and one on the rear, depending on how you what you call the front and rear. They uh, come off by these twist latches. We'll go ahead and take this one off. You just untwist it here and untwist it on the side, and it removes. There you go. It has the 18 inch rack assembly on the front and this particular uh, uh, box when it came had a complimentary card in it for a free rear rack setup. I guess they only come with one apparently. So I went ahead and got that, installed the rear rack uh, with some uh, rivets and we're good to go because for my setup I'll need to put uh, some equipment in the back as well. Speaking of which, let's take a look at what you'll need to order if you do it this way. There are some rack systems here that you buy if this is called a half rack or a half tray. And this will slide right in. You'll get some hardware and uh, you just apply the uh, screws to the right place or right position where you want that. Before I actually started this project, I did a little bit of mock-up ahead of time to know exactly where I'll need the trays put and how we're going to line all the radios. One of the neat features on the WI5J uh, setup was the use of a rack rider. Here's the rack rider right here. Basically it has two components. On the back has an eight plug AC outlet. You always need a power strip. It's already incorporated then in your setup. What's nifty is on the front, it has the on off switch, but check this out. In dark settings, I got lights. You'll see it set up when we have it all done later. Okay, you're probably wondering what the heck am I putting in this thing? So let's take a look at all the equipment. For rails, we've got the uh, FT-857 and I'm going to also put in an FT-8800. Antenna tuner. Got some speakers. I always like to see my SWR in power, something strange I guess. So I've got two, one for each radio. I also want to get into some uh, PSK-31. I've got a Signalink USB box. And of course, to uh, power all this excitement, I've got the uh, Alinko DM3330 MV power supply. To distribute all the power, what we're first going to go into is uh, West Mountain's uh, power gate. This allows me to um, incorporate backup power as well as uh, AC power. And if uh, the AC goes dead, I get automatic backup right away. Neat little gizmo. And then, of course, uh, I've got the uh, famous rig runner here to distribute all the uh, power to each radio and equipment. Already made up some jumper cords, coax, 
and some power cords with Anderson power poles, all kinds of other good stuff ahead of time. So we'll get started. Here you go, we got the uh, first part all done finally. Let's take a closer look here. Down this section we've got the 857 above it, antenna analyzer, and then the SWR power meter. In the center we've got the speaker, the signal link and another speaker. Down here we've got the uh, power supply, 8800, and then another SWR meter and of course on the top is our rack rider which is our uh, power strip in the back and some lights up front we'll show you that later I had to do some modification here it took a little time the uh, speaker here I had to fit the size so we had to do a lot of shaving sanding and cutting down to make that fit but uh, we got tools we'll make it happen all right so now all we need to do is we'll spin this around and we'll start working on the back. We're looking at the uh, back side of the uh, box and in order to mount the uh, rig runner and the uh, power gate I needed another flat deck back here just like how we had in the front. Now when I ordered the, sh uh, the shelves they come at a standard length. To order the third one I had to cut it down to size because the width here would have uh, gone beyond and into the other shelves in front and it wouldn't work. So I had to use a saw, cut this down to size, we're good to go. We got our uh, rig runner and the power gate all hooked up here with all the wires. So we've got the uh, power supply that comes into the power gate and then the power gate comes into the rig runner. Then I've got a power uh, that goes to the 857 and then power that goes to the uh, 8800. So we're just on the home stretch here. All I've got to do is hook up my uh, jumper coax for the uh, back of the uh, has to be our meters and I think we're almost good to go here. So I've got the uh, jumper uh, coax cables put in and I hooked up uh, two J poles uh, to both uh, radios to do a radio check here so let's give it a try. We'll spin this around. It's nice having a lazy Susan to do this on. Alright so we'll turn our power strip on which is the rack rider here gives you a red light. Mike's out of the way. We'll turn the power supply on. Alright, we'll turn the A57 on. And we'll turn the 8800 on. Alright, it's early in the morning here so there wasn't much hand band so I turned it to the weather channel. So you can see that it's picking up. There you go. If it gets dark, we have these lights that we can pull out. Turn on. There you go. You can see a little bit of the contrast there. There's the police plane. Alright, well there you go. That's my go box. Okay, since I talked to you last, I've made a few changes to the equipment and a couple modifications to the go box. So, let me show you.
Okay, something I added here was this little rack. This 19 inch little panel here on the rack I picked up for like two bucks at the uh, amateur flea market recently. And as you can see what it does is the coax and my power cord uh, keeps it up and out of the way. All right, so I stow my uh, microphones right here with this uh, Velcro strap. We'll take that off and hook them up. All right, for this test, I'm just gonna temporarily just put up this fold-up J-pole right here alongside the house. And for uh, HF, I've got this uh, super antenna. Just gonna sit here and see if we can receive anything off of it. I recently uh, picked up this Honda EU uh, 2000i uh, generator it's uh, really portable saw a lot of good reviews about it so I'm gonna fire this up for the second time it's brand new and uh, for this demonstration go on portable power here Okay, well there's 20 meters, it seems to be coming in fairly well, and my uh, 2 meter 440 is receiving very well. We'll do a signal check here on the local uh, repeater. Okay, C62 ID testing. You might notice here that the uh, SW meter over here on the left is not the one that I originally had in the setup. Unfortunately, that uh, one had a bad SO239 in the back and I had to replace it. So I got a match set and I went with the Daiwa. Um, they seem to be uh, nice and small and affordable. So that's it. That's my go box. Looks like it's working out pretty good out here in the field.